here are situations when we're going to compare what an ion size is compared to a neutral atom. Now, taking sodium for example, its atomic number is 11, and its electron configuration is 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, and 3s1. So when we talked about electron configurations, we know that uh, generally atoms want to have those filled outermost S and P sublevels uh, filled. So by losing this outer electron that sodium has, this one valence electron, it will have its previous energy level with eight valence electrons, and the outermost S and P sublevels will be filled, just like those noble gases. Okay, so when sodium, the neutral atom of sodium, which we have right here, with its one valence electron, when it actually loses that valence electron, it still has the same number of protons inside of the nucleus. So currently in this neutral atom state, we have 11 protons, which are all positive, holding on to 11 electrons, which are all negative. And that's what's making the atom neutral. However, if we lose that outermost electron, then this entire energy level is not filled. Uh, technically, it's still there. However, now we have 11 protons still inside of that nucleus, and it only has a total of 10 electrons to hold on to. So the net charge of this particle now is a positive one charge. And when something becomes a plus one charge, we call it a cation. We know that a cation, the positive ion, which we've talked about before, the cations are actually smaller than what their neutral atom's size was. So for instance, with the atom sodium, in the neutral atom state, with that one valence electron, after the loss of that electron, the ion is now smaller than the neutral atom because that valence electron that originally was there is now completely gone. And these electrons are pulled closer into the nucleus by those positive charges that are still present. Cations are smaller than their neutral atoms. Now let's talk about chlorine. Now looking at chlorine, the configuration of chlorine is 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, and 3p5. So by gaining one electron, it will have the same configuration as the noble gas argon. And so that's what chlorine tends to want to do, because remember, generally an atom will not lose or gain generally more than three. There are many exceptions, which we'll get into later. Um, but chlorine here is going to gain one. So if we do gain an extra electron into this atom, and if an electron comes in, we still only have the 17 positive charges holding on to all of these electrons. This extra electron that comes in is causing more electron-electron repulsions. It is still attracted to the nucleus somewhat. However, all the core electrons are also pushing it away. So, so many repulsions have um, actually caused this electron boundary to be a little bit further away from the nucleus. Because it's the same number of protons, but now there's 18 negative particles that these protons are trying to hold on to. So, what happens here with chlorine in its neutral atom state, when it gains an electron, it becomes an anion, an ion that is negative in charge, and it also becomes larger than the neutral atom state because that extra electron is only held by the same number of protons. So as a quick review, um, a neutral atom, if it loses an electron, it becomes smaller than the neutral atom. Cations are smaller than the neutral atom. However, if a neutral atom gains an extra electron, there's more electron-electron repulsions going on inside that atom, so the boundary tends to get a, bit, a little bit larger. Anions are larger than their neutral atom, and cations are smaller than their neutral atom.